Hi there, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we're going to talk about probability topics, and I'm going to give you an overview of the entire lesson, starting with just what probability is. Basically, it's what could happen and how likely it is. So far, we've been dealing with collected observations, and now we're going to see a difference between collected observations and what is really supposed to happen or what we consider actual probability based on what could happen. And we'll see some similar tables before we saw frequency distributions after we collected data and then organized it into a table. And we could have some relative, uh, relative uh, frequencies, which can be viewed as probabilities within that particular collection of data. And we calculated things like the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. And we used these symbols if we were representing a sample from some of the population. Now we'll be looking at actually what could happen. And so let's look at how this is representing counting the number of dots on top of a face of a fair die that's rolled six times, or meant to say rolled once with six sides. And if I rolled it, in this case, 10 times, let's say I came up, I rolled a four, then a three, then a six, and so on, then my mean would be 3.9, my variance would be 2.5, my standard deviation would be 1.6, which is different from what should happen because we know if it's a fair die that each possible value should have the same probability and it should be 1 out of 6 as a decimal 0.167. So notice that what did happen is not always the same as what could happen. But in the long run, I'll show you an example of having done more rolls as an experiment. All right, so here's an example where I have Instead of doing just 10 rolls, let's say we did 76 rolls. You can see all the recording of all my rolls here. And now notice that my mean is closer to the actual mean that we would expect. The expected value should be 3.9 if we're, if we're dealing with the fact that every side has an equal probability of occurring. So now notice that my frequencies are my relative frequencies, that is, are much closer to the actual probabilities that I was expecting. So the more you do, in the long run, it should approach the actual probabilities. So the definition of a probability is a number that gives the likelihood that a specific event will occur. Basic probability involves assuming that we have equally likely events and then counting the number of favorable outcomes by the to and dividing it by the number of possible outcomes. So if I want to know the probability of rolling a three on a fair six-sided die, I should know that that's equally likely sides. One is favorable out of six. So an exact probability as a fraction would be one over six as a decimal 0.1667 as a percentage 16.67% chance. So typically when we talk about probabilities, we speak in terms of exact fractions or decimals or decimal approximations between zero and one inclusive. And when we talk about it as a percentage, that's more about understanding it as a chance. So we're gonna look at some key definitions so you can understand what I'm explaining in this section but make sure to read all of your vocabulary. So a few key definitions, we'll start with defining them and then we'll look at some examples to help us understand them better. First of all, an experiment is a planned activity carried out under controlled conditions. So this is the process that we're going to play out. A random variable is the variable used to represent the possible values that could occur as a result of the process. And we won't know what these random variable values are until we actually run the experiment. So first, we'll just look at it as in what could happen. We denote random variables with a capital letter X typically. And when we're speaking about 
actual individual values, we use a lowercase x. The domain of a random variable will be the set of all possible values it could be, while the sample space, which is a similar concept, refers more to the process. And sometimes they are the same, and sometimes they look a little different. So the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. An event is a subset of the sample space. So when we look at events, we'll define them with a sentence or a phrase that tells us what we mean. And then we can abbreviate them with capital letters so that it's easy to refer to them quickly. P of A denotes the probability that event A will occur. And it's typically read P of A. P of B given A denotes the probability that event B will occur after event A has already occurred. And this is known as conditional probability. In other words, what's the probability of B under the condition that A already happened? And this symbol here is not a slash. It's a straight up and down vertical line. And it reads, given that. Now we'll look at, at some examples so that we can try to understand each of those definitions more clearly. Now, the process that we're using is favorable outcomes divided by total number of possible outcomes. And this requires equally likely events. So let's look at an example. So first of all, we know an experiment is the process. So we could define it as rolling a six-sided fair die once and counting the number of dots on the top face. The random variable which would be used to represent the possible values, would be the number of dots on the top face. The domain of this random variable would be the set of all possible values it could take. In this case, it could be one dot on top, two, three, four, five, or six. The sample space, which is the set of all possible outcomes, is actually the same in this case as the domain. And so we have six in our sample space, six simple outcomes. So the event, we can define it any way we want. So let's define it this time as rolling an even number. There are three even numbers on a six-sided die. So six total outcomes, and out of those six are three favorable events. So we have the number of possible successes would be 3, and the size is 6. So 3 out of 6 equals 1 out of 2, or 0.5, or 50%. Here's another example. Let's define the experiment, or the process, as rolling a fair six-sided die three times, and record the number of times there are an even number of dots on the top face. So now the random variable will not be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Instead, we're counting how many of the three rolls had an even number on the top of the die. So x, the number of times an even number is on the top face of a six-sided fair die. Roll out of, six, um, out of three times. The domain of the random variable is the set of all possible values it could be. So if x is the number of times an even number shows up out of three rolls, then our domain is zero evens, one even, two evens, or three evens. The sample space here looks a lot different than the domain. Notice that we could have no evens, so odd, odd, odd. We could have one even, and the even could be first, second, or third. We could have two evens, and two evens is the same as saying one odd, so that one odd could be last, middle, or first. And the case where we have three evens, all three even, even, even. All right, so the this case right here, this outcome, corresponds with the domain value of zero even numbers out of three rolls. These three right here 
correspond to the domain value 1, one even number out of three rules. That could happen three different ways. These three here represent getting two evens out of three rules, which could happen three ways, and the one way that you could get three evens. So in our sample space, we have eight simple outcomes or simple events. And we'll def define this event as A will be rolling an even number two out of the three rolls. So that's a subset of favorable events where we have two evens, three different possible ways. So the number of possible successes is three and the number of total possibilities is eight. So we get three out of eight gives us 0.375 or 37.5%. Now, we said that this, this process of just counting favorable outcomes and dividing by total outcomes requires equally likely events. So let's look at an example where this doesn't work out. So the experiment will be randomly selecting three marbles without replacement out of a bag containing three red, two blue, and one white. Sample space will be the set of all possible outcomes that would look like this. We could get three reds, we could get one red, one blue, one white, one red, two blues, um, and that could be with the red in the first position, middle, or, or um, I should have had one more last there. Okay, so now we have the one where it's blue, blue, red, and so on until we come up with 14 different possible outcomes. The random variable in this case will be the possible outcomes when three marbles are selected out of a bag containing three red, two blue, and one white. So that means in this case it's not a numerical or a quantitative random variable because the results will not be quantities, right? And so then the domain looks like this, and so does the sample space, right? They both look like that. Now, let event A be getting all three marbles red. So there's only one favorable possible event, and we know the real probability is 0 0.05. How do we know this? Well, you're not prepared to learn how this number is correct, but take my word on it and notice what happens when we use this other process of counting the possible successes and dividing by the sample size, or the sample space size, I should say. So one favorable event out of 14 gives us 0 0.0714. So this doesn't work out, and that's because each color of marble has a different probability of being chosen. So we'll need additional skills for a problem like this. So, in summary, remember that probabilities are always between 0 and 1 when expressed in decimal or fraction form, or between 0% and 100% when expressed as percentages. Typically, we mean decimal or fraction when we talk about probabilities, and 0 would mean impossible, 1 would mean certain. And expressed in symbols, that looks like this. And the total sum of all the probabilities must be 1, assuming you've considered every possible case with no overlap. So in other words, if you have considered everything and nothing twice, then you're certain to get one of those outcomes, so the probability should be total of 1. In the next video, we'll start to get into um, probability rules for compound events, and I'll see you over there.